With nine best-selling cookbooks, it's hard to imagine Chef Balloon would want to eat anything but his own creations, but he does. So where does the Michelin-starred chef go when he isn't overseeing his 18 worldwide locations? Well, we're about to find out. Have chef, we'll travel. Hello, Tony. Hello, bonjour, bonjour. Hello. How are you? On y va. Where are you going to take me today? I live in Chester, New York. There is a place called Glenmere Mansion. Mm -hmm. And uh, Glenmere, Ma Glenmere Mansion is quite special. It's um, an old Italian villa mm -hmm. sitting on a hill with beautiful rolling hills, beautiful gardens, and um, a lake, a small lake on the bottom of it. And it's so romantic. But when I started heading towards the West Side Highway, he pointed me to the East River because he had another idea up his culinary sleeve. Apparently, most guests travel to Glenmare in a helicopter, so naturally, he wanted me to fit in. And after the perfect landing, courtesy of Wings Air, I was greeted by my private butler. This place is so romantic, Chef actually got married on the property. His culinary team teamed up with theirs, and needless to say, the food was as exquisite as the estate. Where am I? I know, most people say that. You're in Chester, New York, which is the fabulous farmland mm -hmm. in the Hudson Valley that actually all the farms, a lot of the farms here produce most of the food that goes into the restaurants in New York City. Yes, they do. So an hour from New York City, but you really feel like you're somewhere else, which is really nice. Like another country. D totally. Totally. And our hotel, which is Glenmere Mansion, is uh, a Tuscan villa built by a very famous family out of New York City in the early 1900s, built this house. They had gone on their honeymoon around the world. She kept hounding her, her husband, build me this Tuscan villa I saw or else I'm gonna divorce you. 1911, he started building the Tuscan villa and this was their private home. I gotta try that with my husband. Build it, me that Tuscan villa. Well, it's kind of funny because she kept threatening him and threatening him. By the time he started building it, she had already found somebody else. Oh no! So he got halfway through, <laughs> built it, and then she dumped him, and he went back to Italy, because now he had this Italian villa and no wife, and he found a second wife who was an Italian princess. So they lived here until the mid-40s. They have an outrageously luxurious spa, and you have two restaurants to choose from. Now, you don't have to stay at Glenmare Mansion to enjoy the food here. And in the kitchen is where you will find chef Geoffrey Deconique, who worked not only for Daniel Balloud, but also David Boulet, and he will knock your culinary socks off. He started off with a grilled chicken paella with saffron rice, mussels, chorizo, string beans, and shrimp. Okay, let's see if a French boy can cook Spanish food. Ooh, that looks delicious, people. Trois de un. The French boy can cook Spanish food. Then he moved on to a duck dish that he had made for a recent Thursday night wine series, which is a five course prefix menu paired with exceptional wines from around the world, not usually offered by the glass. And at 65 bucks, it's probably the best deal in the Hudson Valley. But then he cooked his way into the heart of his Italian host. A beef bolognese open ravioli with tomato compote, vegetable brunoise, and bechamel, topped with parmigiano and toasted breadcrumbs with herbs and lemon zest. Madonna! I was not going to try this because I have a job, an occupational hazard of gaining weight. But I'm going to because we discovered that the French chef can cook Spanish. Come closer, chef. You don't have to be scared. But can the chef cook Italiano? We're about to find out. Ho oh, ho! That was like a sexy little move right there. Did you catch that, Doug? You can't take a little bite of the open raviolo. You must take a giant raviolo whole bite, right? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> It's like, who is this crazy woman in my kitchen? They could go away. In three, do you know? If I come to stay here, could you make a bathtub full of this for me? Yeah, yeah, I could. Has anybody ever asked you to do that? No. Now, Glen Mare was not Chef Balloon's only pick. Back in the city, we were off to destination number deux. That's two in French, folks. 
Give me my baguette! Meet Carly Hughes, the creative culinary force behind the best gluten-free shop Chef Danielle Balloud or I have ever been to. Chef even says she makes the very best gluten-free baguette in the world. She says the secret to her bread is the starter she created three years ago. So precious, she stores a little bit in three different locations. Fresh out of the oven, it was time to give that baguette a try. Moment of truth has arrived, people. Ellen Bella's gluten-free baguette. Loved and adored by the world's top chefs. Yes. Yes. I get told regularly it's the best in the world, so. I Like, I haven't had this before. No. Three, two, one. Can't tell it's gluten free, can you? You cannot tell that it's gluten free. I might learn, look how fluffy it is. You know, gluten yeah. free bread is usually like flat. Yeah. And disgusting. Airy, fluffy, light, delicious. That is why you are the woman. But it don't stop there, people. No one can make a gluten-free quiche like her, and no one, and I mean no one, can make a G-free cookie like my girl Carly. We have so many more items than most other places. We have, these are all our cookies. We got chocolate chip, ginger spice, triple chocolate, almond, peanut butter, PB and J. And then we have some vegan cookies as well, um, which are super awesome. We do cupcakes every day, regular and gluten-free. We've got fudge pie. We do tarts. Um, and then we've got oh. bread, bread pudding, brownies, pecan bars. So what is in this cookie? Uh, a little bit of everything. It's chocolate chips, sunflower seeds, cherries, peanut butter, oats, flax. It's yummy and a little more healthy for you. Flax this is a cookie that will also make you poop. Yes, it can help with that. <laughs> See, I, maybe I should bring some home for my almost four-year-old who's having issues. I think he would really enjoy that. <laughs> hey, just, just as long as the amount of torture material I'll have for their first girlfriends. I was going to say, just save this tape in the 16th birthday pile, and for his birthday, just show it as you sing happy birthday. <laughs> Gluten-free, vegan, everything cookie. Yes. That will make you poop. In three, two, one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's Liz and I both at the end of a long day go to that one. Oh, I can't help myself. Oh, it's two bites. It's a two bite cookie. <laughs> Aside from the sweets, she also made a killer sourdough and a multigrain. But you can't leave without trying one of these. Can I have one of your sugar balls? <laughs> yes, I would love to share my cherry balls with you. <laughs> <laughs> you got some big sugary balls. I know. You know what? Just you can't say sugary balls and not have a skull there. It's not my first time here, people. No. You think Danielle Balloon's got the 411 on the best gluten free? I had it four years ago. She did. It's four, true. five, six? I don't even know how many years ago. Eh, four. Mmm. Three, four. Oh my god, your sugary balls are delicious. Like, thank you. They have oh. a great chewy texture. <laughs> Thank you. Love you, girl. Love you, too. Thanks. Come. Ellis Bella's Beacon 4 what? 418? 420. 418, 420. 418, 420 Beacon, New York. If you like gluten-free, even if you love flour, you still want to meet this woman. And try Ellis Bella's. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up, we uncover the red velvet cookie bomb with molten Nutella. And we haven't been the same ever since. And will esteemed pastry chef Francois Payard regret letting me into his kitchen? Stick around to find out.